Right. I think. I think we are live. I'm going to transition to this. And there we go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Nintendo Direct Predictions, which we found out is going to be tomorrow of all days. Um, and yes, we are very excited for a lot of different reasons for this Nintendo Direct. And with me today are my three friends. Oh, are we supposed to introduce ourselves? Go ahead. <laughs> oh, shoot. What's, what should I first? say? I don't know, man. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah, I'm Mitch. I am the editor-in-chief for Conchu, which is our uh, serialized magazine for CAA. And I guess the fun Nintendo-related fact is uh, I play Super Smash Bros. Ultimate competitively. Yeah. Yeah, well, I was going to... Oh, okay. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm Andy, and uh, I'm hoping there's Fire Emblem news. <laughs> Same. <laughs> uh, I'm Heaven, and I'm a country artist, and I'm more excited for uh, Breath of the Wild, hopefully. Something. <laughs> right. We're going to talk about all of this and more, so let's get strapped in, and we can pretty much jump right into it. I do have this games radar, um, uh, what's it called? An article by Games Radar from eight days ago before we even knew the direct was coming. Um, that kind of lists all of the Switch games that are for 2021 and beyond. Hopefully, it's actually accurate, and I don't have to uh, look around for other sources of news. But uh, do we want to just like walk through this list and then uh, stop by whenever we see any uh? Anything that catches our eye? Oh, I didn't. Um, heaven, want to like tell it? <laughs> oh my god! Live well, on stream. <laughs> I knew that the direct was coming before <laughs> eight days ago. <laughs> uh, with um, because I was on a, a subreddit for gaming leaks, and you know the U. When you have a patent with the U.S., the U.S. uh releases it after a certain point and Nintendo had a patent for a new uh, controller and um, since the US was going to release it on Friday that means they kind of had to have the direct tomorrow to uh, like to you know tell everyone before the US government does <laughs> yeah I heard about that a couple of days ago so not as early as you like uh, they filed a patent with the FCC or something and then uh it's gonna be released like very soon so that is very interesting i'm not sure <laughs> like the the patent itself is what i'm really curious about actually because like it's a controller yeah yeah like what kind of controller is this <laughs> maybe they're fixing joy con drift <laughs> oh my god wait <laughs> I thought it was like I thought I like saw rumors of it being like an N sixty four controller. I I think. Oh yeah, I also heard rumors that they're actually going to release a bunch of N sixty four games. So I thought it was like, like I think that's what I actually think they're going to talk about at the direct. Ooh yeah, finally get us the virtual console. Ooh. Bring back older games for once. Wait, that is really Switch exciting. Release. Yeah, but wait, Mitch, you said. You said that there, it's the it's the N sixty four controller. Yes, yes, the really bad one with the <laughs> stick in the middle for some reason. They're not gonna yeah. modify it. <laughs> Is it gonna be I mean, just the probably, same? They probably will, but I mean, it's just just based off of like, I don't know, YouTube thumbnails or article titles could be clickbait, could be the real thing. Who knows? We'll, we'll see. <laughs> but <laughs> just need to know: Are we gonna yeah, have this... to use Mario gloves for it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They'll have drift as well, <laughs> on, like all the sticks. <laughs> oh no! All right. Well, let's let's see. Actually, so they might announce something related to the N sixty four and Virtual Console. So is that what we're feeling like that controller? Like that's it regarding that controller, or is there something more to it that we might be expecting? I think that's it. 
Yeah, it is pretty, pretty limiting that it is a controller, so it, it's not like a new console or anything, it's just like a controller type. So, yeah. yeah. Mitch, what? Yeah, I was just thinking like, remember how they used to release those mini SNES or something? Like they released those mini consoles mm, yeah. with all those games. Oh. I'm wondering, I don't, I'm not sure, I think it would have leaked even more if they're actually going to release like a mini N64, but it's possible they could either do that again with that, con with that like retro controller, or as we like already said, it could just have been they're just gonna port N64 games along with some retro controller just for this nostalgia. Ooh, wait, yeah, the N64 Mini. That would, yeah, I feel like we would have heard something a little bit earlier and something a little bit more clear if it were the Mini, but mm -hmm. I would want to see that happen. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna like like run through all the minis just like uh, n64 gamecube then we get to the wii <laughs> yeah and then we're back to the switch oh, the mini switch all right well how about we jump into some games so is anyone uh excited about metroid dread any metroid fans among us uh. Well, uh, <laughs> among us for smash so. wait a minute we'll get to the smash predictions later <laughs> did you want to say something andy or no i mean i haven't played metroid before but i guess it looks cool so yeah same i was thinking of buying it just to check it out but i think one thing people were saying is that metroid sales do very poorly like i'm pretty sure Breath of the Wild. Well, I mean, I guess it's a hard estimate, hard comparison because Breath of the Wild is Breath of the Wild. But yeah. like, one Zelda game has more sales the entire Metroid franchise has combined. No. So I think <laughs> if people buy Metroid Dread, then it'll actually show that it's not a dying franchise anymore and that people really do want their games. I mean, I, I think I think they kind of know based on the hype around Metroid Prime 4, which I don't know if we're gonna see in this article, but we can talk about it now too. Like, I don't know, man. Metroid Prime 4, we're still waiting on that game. We're trying to see if there's anything that they have to say, but um, they, uh, they restarted development on that too. So it doesn't really look good for the future of Metroid. Yeah. Unless Metroid Dread, like, really succeeds in getting a lot of interest and do we feel like people are interested in this game to the degree I saw, that, yeah uh, so i was gonna say i saw it trending on twitter you know when i first like talked about it but you know it's twitter <laughs> oh yeah so it's, it could literally just be like one person just keeps talking so i don't think it will do that well Hmm. Yeah, because, like, that, that makes sense to me. Like, Twitter would be pretty surprised and pretty hype about it. But um, that could be the same kind of hype that I have towards it. Like, I'm very excited because I have heard about the Metroid games and how heard of how good they are. But, like, I myself probably won't pick this game up, um, unfortunately. So we'll have to see how many people actually <laughs> decide to give it a try um as for like if it's gonna show up in the direct i i don't think so it's a really close release right so they probably gonna just uh promote that on its own unless i don't know like maybe a, a trailer they make there? little reminders of like what's coming up true um so it'll probably just be a really brief <clears throat> trailer um so I heard like some of the most recent trailers already had others in it, and I'm like avoiding them just in case I end up getting the game. But... Oh yeah. Uh but is it like a small trailer or is it part of a montage? I think the montages are only for indie games though, right? Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Like, yeah. I... Also, I'm not buying it for sixty dollars. <laughs> oh wait, is it sixty dollars? <laughs> <Good point. laughs> I wasn't even sure like how much it was. 
Metroid Dread. Let's check out its pre-orders. Because, like, what I've seen of this game, it, it looks like it's like $40 to me. Yeah, um, just I thought because... it was like $40 too, and I looked it up, and it's like the base version would be $60. Dang. And then the special edition is 90 Oh, man. Okay, you know, like, it, if I were a Metroid fan and if I were keeping up with the series, I would definitely probably defend the price, but I just don't know enough about it. I would like... defend the, I would defend the ninety dollar price because it comes with a one hundred ninety page art book. Ooh, that is pretty cool. And oh, artwork from all five two D Metro games. Ooh, nice. Like, people have been waiting for this game for a long time, and it's been in like the development hell for the longest time, from what I understand. So, I don't know. Don't know too much about it, but very excited to see it happen. Maybe Metroid can uh, revitalize its hype. All right. Well, let's see. Super Mario Party Superstars. Any Mario Go. Party? Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Did, did we see anything interesting about this game in E3? I'm trying to remember. Like anything that makes it. Uh, stand out from the other Mario Party games. Don't really play too many of them. Well, I think oh. for one, well, I think for one, it, it's like very niche, but it has a more substantial online mode. Like, I think you can actually save your progress. But like, I, I think right, that's one thing you can save your progress if you're playing online with friends. Oh. Um, oh yeah, that's what I said. Actually, but. I think it's like a little lazy because I don't know. To be honest, the past few Mario Party games have been kind of lackluster. So instead of making the newer ones better, they're just bringing all the older ones back, which is what it seems to me. Mm, yeah. And as for seeing it in the direct, probably just a little reminder. Is there yeah. anything that do you think they'd be like, oh, hey, check this out? This is a very surprising, wow, for like a Mario Party game. I don't know, how, how could they even surprise us? They give us a whole new Switch that's just some Super Mario Party theme. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I mean, I mean, I, I think they do that for like a, a mainline Mario release, right? <laughs> but Mario Party, I don't know. <laughs> Unless it's like a Mario Party map covering the entire back of the Switch. That'd be pretty interesting. Shin Megami Tensei 5. Now, okay, I saw this trailer. Yeah. I don't understand what it is about. Okay, interesting. So, do you know what Persona is, right? Yes. Yeah. So, Shin Megami Tensei is the, like, mainline series that Persona kind of sp uh, spins off from. And it spin off, and it, it was a spin off of Shin Megami Tensei a, a long time ago. So that's why we're on Persona Five as well as Shin Megami Tensei Five. Um, and I think the SMT games kind of take longer to produce from Atlas. I think maybe I don't know. Persona Five has been in development for a while, so I might be just wrong. It just might be like kind of slow uh, to like put out each of their different series. Which they have many. So that said, uh, SMT games kind of are like how do I describe it? Uh, I haven't actually gotten to play any of them, but I've heard quite a bit about them, and I am pretty interested. Um, in this case, and I think in three, the main character is kind of teleported to a different place where there are demons about. And they themselves are also um, kind of fused with a demon of some sort. I, I'm pretty sure in 5, uh, you are fused with a very specific demon that kind of gives you special powers. And then you can collect demons kind of like a Pokemon game? <laughs> Something like that? 
I, I definitely know more about like persona system of like Joker picking up like uh uh what do they call them in, in those games? Shades, shadows? Yeah. Yeah, shades. Um no, shadows. Shadows, shadows. <laughs> and uh I should know I this. I'm playing through strikers. <laughs> uh, they're all the same to me. Um and yeah, kind of like playing that uh turn-based RPG system, right? And actually, Mitch, have you played any of the SMT games? Um, not really. I've been meaning to buy Persona 3, or not Persona, uh, SMT 3 Nocturne for the Switch, but I've talked with a friend about it as he played through the beginning. So I like know like, like the basics. Gotcha. Actually, now I think about it, the real release of Nocturne on Switch, does it... Who's the special guest? It's not Dante, is it? <laughs> it is indeed Dante. It is actually Dante? <laughs> yeah, Dante. It's this is I think this is what sparked the featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series in you. I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure. I mean I, I know that there's like two versions of the of the original game, like the Dante one, and then there's another one where they replace Dante with a different character. So I was there's wondering a, if another this... guest character from another Atlas title, I think it's called Devil Summoner? It's like, yeah, it's like Devil and then something. But it's either Devil Summoner or Devil Survivor, but yeah, just another Atlas game. Gotcha. That they took a character from. Yeah. Oh my god. Featuring Dante from Devil May Cry. I mean, now, if, if he's actually in the Switch version, that maybe I'll actually pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> I do like Dante very much, and uh, he's currently a me fighter, but that's fine. Um... Yeah, so I, I do know a lot of people are very excited for SMT5, and, uh, I don't know, Mitch and I have played Tokyo Mars Session, so maybe we should start hopping into the, uh, the actual mainline games, huh? <laughs> Dude, Tokyo Mars Sessions 2, please. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> be, instead of a new Fire Emblem game, it's just Tokyo Mars Sessions 2. Andy, how do you feel about that? <laughs> I'm okay with it. New game. Oh yeah. Wait, I have you played the original? Oh no. Oh, we gotta have you play the original. Oh man, it's so much yeah. fun. I love it. It's like I played eventually. Yeah. Have you played a Persona game? I haven't. Oh okay. I also wanted to try that out too. Yeah, I would describe uh, TMS FE as like a Persona game with like Fire Emblem characters and then an extra like uh session system to it where like the characters jump in and that is so much fun and you have to like watch out for quick time events to like have them oh, quick time events yeah perform in the right um in the right way so that you kind of increase the amount of uh increase the chain and it just like gets flashier and flashier as it progresses into like crazy um absolutely wild combos so yeah, I love that game. <laughs> that sounds pretty fun. Complete opposite of Fire Emblem. Oh, you're right. Yeah, it literally has barely any Fire Emblem aspects to it now that I think about it. Oh no. Yeah. Um, except for the characters and we have the weapon triangle, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll get to Fire Emblem in a bit, but how about Pokemon? Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I know some of uh, our roommates have some thoughts on it as well, but they're not here, so... <laughs> what are we thinking with... I mean, I think they'll mention yeah. it, but not really too much. They'll just have, like, separate directs covering them more if they want. Yeah. And mention it how? Just, like, a small trailer or something in a montage? Yeah, just a trailer. Trailer? All right. If they want, this... they could tease something a little more. Just that I'm saying by the Switch version. <laughs> You know, because it came out with like a new Switch uh, version of it, of like, like it's a Pokemon themed Switch. Oh yeah, yeah. Wait, does it actually? Is it coming out with a Pokemon themed Switch? Yes, it's coming out next month. Whoa, November. okay. No, not next that. month, November. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, I'm not the. Uh, I haven't been following along with Pokemon news <laughs> personally, but. 
it's not up for pre-order right now so i just been refreshing trying to see oh, <laughs> if man. i can get one <laughs> well i hope you get one if that sounds really cool i'm actually interested in what that looks like i see we have someone in the chat who said give us pokemon mystery dungeon explorers remakes <laughs> down for that but the original is so good did they make one or am i crazy didn't they make a remake uh, of like red and blue? i made a remake of like blue and red rescue team yeah, blue and red. yeah. Was, yeah and i heard that it was pretty fun and did it do well though i don't remember I have no clue. I actually didn't play it. Yeah, I've uh, only played Explorers of Darkness. So if they made if they remade those, that would be pretty nice to see. Yeah. I also played Gates to Infinity. Kind of short though. <laughs> I'm looking at the special edition switch and wow. <laughs> wow, that looks really cool. What what? <laughs> so like um how do i describe this this is gold and silver just like sleek and very presentable it looks really nice yeah i can see why you wanted to pre-order this i'm kind of leaning towards it now too <laughs> uh i was expecting more of a pink and blue color scheme considering it's uh fuck yeah, or considering the uh the legendaries play well we're probably not going to see too much of that game outside of the pokemon company's personal uh thing and let's see are, are you guys looking at this article on your own um yeah like screens okay yeah. cool so do we want to talk about mineko's nightmare market i'm not sure no dude i'm pretty sure all of these like these are like games, indie games you know, that we that yeah a little interest in yeah, I, I don't really know if I don't know if I have any opinion on any of those. Uh, Ar Pokemon Legends Arceus, another <laughs> Pokemon game. I just remember the trailer, and I maybe thought they're begging for some frames. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> look at that frame rate. Those frame I rates. Mean, to be fair, Breath of the Wild had some frame rate issues. Oh yeah, it's the yeah. Game. Yeah, and also like it's still in the game too. Like when you get near um cro the croc forest, the oh, frames yeah. like are so bad. <laughs> I forgot about that place. Yeah, except uh, this Pokemon game doesn't really look like Breath of the Wild now, does it? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh I, no. <laughs> I, it just seems so empty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I don't want to trash on it. So yeah, I'm definitely. gonna wait. I'm gonna wait and see if it's good or not. It's li yeah. And then buy it. <laughs> yeah. Looks a little rough. I do like um some of the um some of the very specific a uh, aspects of this game where like you're roaming around open world and sneaking up on Pokemon, but other than that, like I don't really know much else to say about it. I like how Pokemon can just straight up kill you now. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> really? Well, you don't die, you just get knocked out. Uh, okay. <laughs> unless you're, unless we're expecting a uh, Pokemon Conquest 2. <laughs> <Ooh -hoo. laughs> Was that good, by the way? I, I love that game. <laughs> Although, yeah, I think I remember seeing that, but I never ended up playing it. Yeah, I, I played it. Uh, yeah, I played it on my DS. It's like one of the few games I had on it, other than like other Pokemon games. And uh, I was like, yo, this is so cool. I get to be a tactician and, like, interact with this world in a very, like, um, kind of like, well, a conquest, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, yeah, wow, Fire this Emblem is amazing. Now there's Pokemon. Yeah, except I didn't play any Fire Emblem games before that. And then I Most actually Fire played. Fire Emblem is just Pokemon Conquest. But yes. With real people. Yes, of course. <laughs> and Fire Emblem is low-key, like, really way better at the um tactical rpg system unfortunately because like conquest going back to play conquest now i i just can't handle it because it's it doesn't have like uh counter attacks it doesn't have like a lot of um quality of life stuff that fire emblem has as well 
So it's a lot harder to move units around, and you have an odd camera angle as well. I don't know. Uh, but if uh, intelligence systems were to collaborate with a good old Pokemon company, hey, who knows? Uh, does anyone know what Marvel's Midnight Suns is? I don't remember no. this game ever. <laughs> Right. The only Marvel game I play is Spider-Man. Nice. Oh, oh yeah. are you excited for? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I couldn't stop talking about it. I'm so excited. <laughs> I am so ready to see what what those games are going to be like. But, uh, I never heard of Marvel's Midnight Suns. Yeah, I I don't even remember it. It might have been in like a. Uh, Montage during E3? I don't know. <laughs> kind of reminds me of the, you know, not so good Avengers game that came out recently. <laughs> God. <laughs> and I think we actually have another, like, Marvel game coming up that we probably all know a bit more about. Um, but we'll keep that for later. In the meantime, Splatoon 3? Is there anything that they're going to show us? Actually, what did they show us in E3? I think it was just the uh, the teaser trailer, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and the winner of the last Splatoon, uh, Splatfest was Chaos. Yep. And so, so this is like a post-apocalyptic setting. Uh, what kind of things do we want from Pl Splatoon 3 to improve on from Splatoon 2? Actually, do, do any of us play Splatoon now I think about it? <laughs> No. Yeah, yeah, I do not. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I played Splatoon 2 for the most part as in, like, I did until I completed the single-player mode and the DLC, and then I, like, stopped playing it after a while. But, I mean, I'm not... I guess they would try to at least make the gameplay a little more varied, but so far we've only seen, like, new, um, new weapons. And I think a new form of spawning into the game itself. But really, I mostly just play Splatoon for the visuals and the um, single player campaigns. Really? Okay. I mean, the single player campaigns are actually pretty good in both Splatoon 1 and Splatoon 2. Uh, just like, for the most part, I, I would expect uh, a lot of people to play like the multiplayer a lot. Because it, well, yeah, it's like, for sure. built for that. But... <laughs> I guess after you were like finished with the with the solo player or solo play um I guess you were satisfied huh Steve. No yeah like um I forgot the Octo expansion was like the best thing I've ever experienced with Splatoon like the bosses especially I find really fun so I I just keep thinking like they should just make a separate game honestly with full player campaign but then, and then, I don't know. I feel, I, I just really like the solo mode. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, when I first saw the uh, teaser trailer for 3, I was kind of thinking that this might be a single-player, like, Splatoon game. Because you just saw, like, that one uh, inkling kind of just walking around in this post-apocalypse, and you don't see any other uh, inklings, so you're like... Uh, huh, is this a one single player experience? But probably not considering that it's three in the main line. Well, actually, saying main line is a bit odd considering we don't have any uh, spin offs either. <laughs> but if the single player portion of the game is anything uh, like the Octoling expansion, well, maybe we're gonna be in for a pretty cool single player experience along with uh, I'm sure they're gonna make plenty of like quality of life and um, well quality of life improvements and just adding more customization and variety to the multiplayer mm -hmm. yeah unfortunately didn't play two I've played one <laughs> and I really liked one but didn't pick up two unfortunately so maybe I'll pick up three this time around yeah, like, it's still weird to me that they 
decided to make another Splatoon Switch game. Oh, yeah. I was expecting just, them it, to... It's going to invalidate Splatoon 2. Yeah. Like, wait for another console or something. Though I <laughs> guess they don't really have any consoles in the... in the future anytime soon, uh, at least. <laughs> Nintendo's going to beat this dead horse until it's dry, or whatever, however the saying goes. <laughs> I think the Switch is going to be here for a while. Yeah, I think so too. Especially since we haven't really seen the Switch Pro yet, except for the Switch. Uh, the Switch just... Plus? Like, what do we call <laughs> that thing again? <laughs> OL, Switch OLED model. Why is it called like that? <laughs> don't don't talk about that model. I'm not wasting a hundred, like, yeah. what, $50 more. <laughs> I forgot that it even existed. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, the Switch Pro with OLED. Um, yeah. Everyone's talking about 4K <laughs> and, and better battery life. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Nintendo definitely going to beat this to Taurus. Actually, did the Switch surpass the Wii yet? I don't think so, right? In terms of sales? I didn't hear anything about that. Yeah, I would have heard something about that. I know that it it beat out something from the Wii. Controller sales? <laughs> yeah, well, it's beating a little bit because Joy Cons. <laughs> Joy Cons are coming in pairs, so. In the last 12 months, the Switch has outsold the Wii by this many units. Wait, what? It actually surpassed the Wii, and I didn't hear about this. Well, I mean, regardless, the Switch is a very, very successful console, and we can all agree to that, so... Probably sticking with it for a very long time, and pretending that the Wii U didn't exist. Project Triangle Strategy. Working title. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys play the demo? There's a demo. <laughs> yeah, there there was a free demo of this game that came out right after it was announced. But it's made by the same people that did um Octopath Traveler, which I think isn't there a second one coming out as well? So yeah, they have been busy. And uh the way that they work is uh creating a demo and then they have people like send in feedback. And so, yeah, at the very least, I've played the demo of this game, and honestly, I like it a lot. It does remind me of uh, Fire Emblem, except with a few more, like, RPG um, mechanics that aren't really in Fire Emblem. And it kind of has more of a initiative tracker um, system as opposed to, like, player phase and enemy phase, stuff like that. I didn't actually get to utilize much of the terrain kind of things that they were talking about in the um in the trailers felt like the the demo it's like early game so they're kind of like teaching you how to work with the environment i don't know kind of worked well and there's certain stuff in it that i'm like i i think you can sort of cheese a little bit in some instances but that's all right regardless pretty fun game um Jeez, one thing still... huh i was saying it's still 60 dollars <laughs> it is 60 dollars uh i mean i think it's 60 in uh considering that it's not I mean, coming out for I a while so. no i meant the original octopath oh Octo octopath is still 60 yeah dang yeah this is nintendo we're talking about <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, one thing I will say about this game is that its camera work is pretty terrible. Because <laughs> it's, oh. like, a diagonal, like, um, camera angle that you can't, you can't turn to be horizontal with you. So it's really hard to uh, have that, like, over-the-top, um, or at least slightly angled view of the characters that Fire Emblem has. And, like, the diagonal camera kind of makes it really hard to, um... 
uh, center the cursor where you want it to, because sometimes the terrain like causes your cursor to suddenly drop out of nowhere, and you're not sure where on the map you are for a split second. Just kind of a minor thing, but gets a really annoying over time as I played that demo, so I hope they fix that, or at least change it a little bit. And what what do we think the title will be? <laughs> Project Triangle Strategy. <laughs> no. Yeah. They did have Octopath and they're going to keep it again. They kept it with Octopath, but at least that didn't have the project name in it. I'm hoping that the project like part of the name is just, it means. Okay, my mic just like. Okay, there we go. And uh, I don't know. What would this be called? What what's a good name for It'd this be game? Called, um, oh, you here play this until the next Fire Emblem game comes out. <laughs> Fire Emblem, one point five. <laughs> Fire Emblem three strategies. <laughs> Wait, yeah, after three houses, now we have triangle strategy. Three strategies. That's beautiful. Oh, no. Well, don't want to compare it too much to Fire Emblem. It's more along the lines of what, what is it called? Uh, Final Fantasy Tactics, I think. Uh, so yeah. maybe something like... Yeah, I've heard of that one, but also have not played it. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm not even sure if I'm going to get it. I do. I did like what I played of the demo, but you know, if if there is a Fire Emblem game announced, I think I know who's gonna, who I'm going to prioritize. <laughs> do you like it uh -huh. as much as you like sixty dollars? Mm, that is a good question. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that one. Although to be fair, it does look really polished, and I can see if it's like a really long game, it might. Be, it, it probably would be worth the full 60 so don't want to say too much yet gotta see a little bit more of that game and hopefully an actual title so that i can feel excited about it as opposed to just like staying project triangle strategy and being like oh right <laughs> that's a really dumb name <laughs> did anyone play mario and rabbits the first one yeah that, uh, yeah that was a really cute game man. that was fun are you excited for this new sequel to that game? No. Oh. <laughs> Why not? Is it because uh, Rabid Lose Rosalina? <laughs> Rabid Loom. <laughs> Rabid Luda. No, I just think I just kind of... It's, it's kind of weird to say I grew out of it because it came out like pretty recently. <laughs> but it, I don't know. It just doesn't interest me anymore. But I do remember having fun. Gotcha. Yeah, I was pretty surprised when they announced this game because, like, I, I thought the Mario and Rabbits thing was a one-off, but no, Ubisoft just kind of came back and were like, "Hey, let's make another one." <laughs> well, I, I mean, mean, yeah. What's up? It did it didn't win Family Game of the Year or something like that, or was it nominated? I think it was nominated for Game of the Year, right? I actually uh, forgot about this. I thought it was a family like game of the year. Oh, family like game of the year. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, I'm just trying to remember if, like, if it won or if it was just won. Yeah, because I think... I think it might have won that. Uh, Mario and Rabbids. Game Awards. Children's Awards. Uh, best Family Game nominee for BAFTA. And it was also nominated for... Oh, best... yeah. So it was nominated for Best Family Game, but it didn't win. It didn't win, okay. And then it's also nominated for Strategy Game? Yeah, it won. <laughs> it won that one? <laughs> Wait, what year was this again? 2017. 2017, okay. And then when did Three three Houses came out a lot? A little bit after 2018, right? I think. And I think Three Houses won the strategy game that year. Yeah. 
Okay, that's... I mean, based on what I've heard, it probably deserves it. Very yes. nice. Very cool. Alright, now, following this article, we do see Legend of the Galactic... Le uh, oh, okay. Wait a minute. <laughs> I've been talking about Legend of Galactic Heroes too much that I've defaulted oh, I that. It it does have like a game actually. It it has a uh, browser like thing that is closed now. So never mind. It used to have a game, but anyway, Legend of Zelda: <laughs> Breath of the Wild two. <laughs> Do we think that it's going to actually show up? Uh, no. No, <laughs> it's just straight up not going to be there. <laughs> going to pull another like our announcement is that we have no announcement sort of thing. <laughs> I'm gonna cry when Aonuma just steps out and he's in his suit and he's just like in front of this blank background and he's just gonna say I'm s I regret to inform you <laughs> that we are going to have to delay the game again. <laughs> I mean if, if that's what it takes to make it like really good then I, I welcome it. Yeah definitely. I mean they did not have to work on this sequel like so quickly after making the last one. And well, I mean, to be fair, it has been a hot second since Breath of the Wild. We had to, to work on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really, really excited for this game. Yeah, I'm praying for some Zelda news, though. I, I, it can't just be one game for their anniversary. I, I, I need Twilight Princess. <laughs> oh yeah, the anniversary. I forgot about that. Yeah, 35th, right? Yeah, 35th. And we didn't see anything. <laughs> but we saw a uh, game, Skyward Sword. That's and, true, yeah. And that's it. And that's not even the best game. <laughs> it could have ported. Oh, man. Twilight Princess was my first Zelda game, so I, I would really like it on Switch, as well as uh, Wind Waker HD as well, since we're just going to port the last two games on from the Wii U era. Yeah. I didn't uh, switch. I uh, didn't uh, watch the thirty fifth anniversary of watch. Oh, the the watch. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you, Nintendo. Very cool. I don't know. I. Hey, if as if they like have this game, at the direct tomorrow, and they say, "Here's playable Zelda," I'm gonna say that is all that is needed for the thirty fifth anniversary. Thank you, Nintendo. Good day, you have won, just like the rest of every year. I don't know, I just really want a playable Zelda. <laughs> I know if Zelda isn't in it, and if Animal Crossing isn't in it, people will be mad. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah, Animal uh, Crossing. Yeah, there was so much fighting last the last Direct over Animal Crossing not having another like major update. And I don't think it's going to get one again. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I think I've heard like there were rumors that Animal Cro Crossing were like was going to show up this oh, direct. Yeah. I think I don't remember exactly what the details were, but I'm hoping that like the fans will have something, something. <laughs> I don't know what that something will be, but it's got to be something. Especially considering how big that game got, because it. It came right as the pandemic was starting, and it was the perfect timing for that and Doom at the same time. A really successful game. I'm hoping to see something from it. Let's see. I think, I think we can just ta start talking about games that um we have no idea when they're gonna be releasing, like uh, Bayonetta three. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Bayonetta 3 is just going to be delayed forever. Yeah, it, it, it's not, co not coming anytime soon. Because Kamiya was like, it's coming guys, don't worry about it, and then didn't say anything else. Yeah. <laughs> what do you call that? Development hell? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're stuck yeah. in that <laughs> Yeah, at least like with other games, they tend to say, hey, we're taking a little while and wait for us but uh yeah we haven't heard anything from bayonetta 3 ever since that teaser trailer in what 2017 
It's literally been, been three years since a teaser trailer dropped, and we heard we have heard nothing. Although now I think about it, what has Platinum Games been working on recently? I don't know. Just Beta Three? Question mark. I don't, I don't think it's just Beta, because um, <laughs> didn't they port over um, uh, shoot, what's the name of the Heroes game? The Mighty. Oh. 101 or mighty marvelous 101 was that mighty yeah. one? i don't know no one remembers the name of it. okay it's not mighty's not even in the name the wonderful 101 there we go oh, okay. yeah that was last year and then uh oh, they have some games full cresta don't know what that is uh they're working on Yeah, I don't know. I guess they're working on some games, but haven't said anything about Bayonetta 3 in particular, so that's a little awkward. But yeah, I'm not sure if I want to see this tomorrow. <laughs> How much time is the uh, Direct going to be? 40 minutes. 40 minutes? Yeah, if they, if they talk about Bayonetta 3 tomorrow, it would have to be like at least a five minute trailer or something. If not more, to just talk about the game. Or maybe just an extra teaser trailer, so that could just be really short. I don't know, you guess they do announce anything big. Tomorrow. Just, just in general, like anything big? Yeah. Um, The N64 thing, I guess, is going to be the one thing that we know for sure is going to be something. Um, Fire rather, uh, The controller. But, um... Oh. Is Fire oh. Emblem gonna be the big thing tomorrow? No. No, it's I don't that, think so. It's not that big. Well, I mean, it it's like a really big franchise now, at yeah, least. Yeah, true. But, I mean, an insane like. Fire uh, Emblem Heroes Two. Yo. <laughs> bro. <laughs> How would they even change no, I can anything? Play two gotcha games. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> it's like the one guy. Big secrets about our club. Okay. Okay, there we go. So do not touch Discord while you are streaming Discord. <laughs> Notes for the future. Very cool. Okay. Uh where were we? Ah oh, yes, Fire Emblem. <laughs> <laughs> uh Andy, what do you think is the next Fire Emblem game? Um a genealogy remake? Probably. Right? I really hope so. <laughs> I mean, what else are they going to do? It's like the one I mean, thing that I want out of intelligent systems right now. I mean, I know that they're working on... uh, Actually, not even working on... They're releasing... uh, What's it called? Uh, Advanced Wars 1 and 2, right? The, oh, the right. They did, and I forgot they announced Advanced Wars. Yeah, but... I mean, that's coming out really pretty soon, right? Is, is? I think it's already out. It's already out. Okay. It's already out. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention <laughs> to Advance Wars. Um, I, I do want to play Advance Wars uh, sometime, but I am really more interested in the Fire Emblem um, yeah, games. Fair. So I think that's too bad for Advance Wars. But now, Intelligent Systems must be done with everything. They must be working on something else, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> It has to be I genealogy, so. right? <laughs> I mean, it's been like three years since the last game release, so it's about time for a new one, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, man, I'm going to be so disappointed if it's not genealogy. Assuming I mean, honestly, that they like, even say anything. Game, I'm still going to be happy. Yeah, I'm true. Like... True. Yeah, I just hope that whatever is the next game that they release, they're going to have polished out the... um. The engine a little bit more or like how they use the uh warriors engine from bandai namco right so oh, did they use the warriors engine for the wait ban three houses wait. wait is it bandai wait no it's not bandai namco it's uh it's... what's the name of the studio Koei. that makes wait not to... Koei? She doesn't know she... uh Koei. Koei tecmo Koei te yeah i say <laughs> Yeah, Sorry, Koi Tecmo. 
I've been I've been thinking about Tales of Arise a lot, so <laughs> yeah, Bandai Namco came up in my mind. But no, Koei Tecmo. Um, yeah, they've been using that engine, and uh, they were working with them very closely. Um, it was a collaborative effort to make uh, Three Houses, and I believe that most of the writers for that game came from uh, Tecmo Koei or Koei Tecmo. I don't remember which which is which. But yeah. So honest. Yeah. If they like, so like if they do have a remake for a final game, I just really hope they have the art style from Shadows of Valencia, because I felt that it gave like a new insight of what the characters would look like now, but also the coloring and shading. Oh yeah, so I never played genealogy, so I have no clue what it looked like. I, or oh. I, I like, um, I'm not familiar with it. Andy, we can, uh, I, I definitely can play that game on stream if you want me to. <laughs> I'm just I... gonna look it up real quick. Okay, go ahead. Uh, you'll see a lot of people with very floofy hair. <laughs> it... I kind of like this art style. Yeah, it's so good, dude. I love it so I much. I mean, like, cause like, what, in, in like, Gaiden, like, it was kind of weird, right? Yeah. Yeah, Gaiden. Or the original. Yeah, yeah, the, the original, original guy Gaiden was like a little bit like different. It was just built different. <laughs> yeah, honest. Oh yeah, I remember seeing this now. I like this art style. Yeah, I really love that that game and how it looks. Just like everything about it. Yeah, it it's straight up my favorite game of all time. <laughs> to be honest, genealogy of the Holy War is just that amazing. Um, but yeah, it definitely needs more of a serious like. Uh, art style that kind of reflects a little bit more realism, um, just a little bit less of the anime ness that we've been getting. Although now I think about it, if the if we have a similar like style to Three Houses, that would probably fit perfectly if they do it right, because Three Houses kind of has this ethereal but also grounded. Um, art style that kind of like makes the characters feel like they are in a somewhat realistic like military setting but also kind of making them like unique and uh stand stand out a little bit more despite wearing like uh the Same uniforms clothing. yeah so that might work perfectly with genealogy because i i don't think genealogy needs to be like the most realistic uh looking game of all time it just needs to be yeah it can it can have a little bit of, of etherealness because um there are certain parts of genealogy that makes it feel um a lot more like a fairy tale rather than the kind of like political and uh military drama that i think it's kind of either famous for or people just like have heard of from that game I would describe it as like Legend of the Galactic Heroes plus like I don't know Fire Emblem One with like its its mages and dragons <laughs> stuff like that something like that. But man, I really want yeah. a genealogy game. Um, I mean, they like took inspiration from it when they made Three Houses, right? So exactly. That like was really successful, so I think it's not out of the question. Yeah, I'm just really worried um, about if they'll have the maps be really big or really small. Like, how would they change the way that genealogy is played? Because based never, on... Yeah? Oh, I never played it, so I don't really know like anything about the maps. Yeah, so basically, the biggest thing about the, the maps is that they are big. They are very big. And um, traversing them is basically like a multi that campaign to even like reach to the next um combat like location as opposed to the more recent fire emblems which basically kind of starts from fire emblem 5 actually this kind of style of putting the characters in a very hot like hot combat area and having you like immediately get into a fight and figure out what you need to do in that like micro um or rather that um smaller conflict 
as opposed to like a larger conflict with like full armies kind of rushing at each other which is what genealogy is kind of all about um at least in its tone so in order yeah, to like I mean, capture it's different that, than like because like they usually like switch things up from game to game so yeah they do but i feel like the maps and the rationale behind the maps is very different from the philosophy that the current team at intelligence systems oh, yeah, right. has. It was, made it was made like right before like the original creator like dipped, right? Yeah, the original creator made everything from one to five, um, but five is the one where kind of, that kind of shift towards like smaller conflict oh, okay. started. So I, I would say that yeah, he, he kind of had a hand in that because Fire Emblem Six after that kind of. Manga Fall, is that? Not really? I, I don't know. Just like smaller and smaller maps as we go on. Although Radiant Dawn and Path of Radiance kind yeah, of they were like, just that up. Yeah, I didn't play them, but they're like super long. I don't know. I, I may be like making a blanket statement here just because I'm a little worried based on Three Houses. Like, So Three Houses is kind of what I'm thinking about when I'm saying the maps are really small. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll see. And yeah, of we'll course, see. yeah, hopefully they polish up uh, that what they've done in Three Houses as well, because um, I, I don't think I can take certain things seriously if it were just like Three Houses. Like, uh, these really regal characters kind of like walking up to talk to one another in like this... Uh, in Three Houses, it, it's like a literal like sphere made out of the background, I think. And that's what the, where they talk in. So I'd rather have like an actual like environment where the characters are, and uh, oh. having different castles is going to be interesting. I'm not sure if they're going to like model like a oh, multiple yeah. locations. Yeah, like three houses is going to be fully voice acted too. That's true. Yeah, that's going to be an insane That'd amount be of work. Cool. Yeah. I forgot that old games had no voice acting. Oh yeah, that's true. And this game has a lot of characters, although. Three Houses has a lot of characters as well, so it's probably just going to be about the same, if not slightly more, um, voice acting as before. Yeah. Which also kind of brings into question the budget, because the uh, the remakes, from my understanding, do not have the same level, the, the same amount of budget as like mainline games. Um, oh yeah, right. I think I heard about that with Tales of Valentia. Yeah, uh, Shadow. Yeah, Shadows of Valentia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and okay. a much lower budget, but it still was able to pull through with a, a pretty great experience. But yeah, I liked it. Oh. Yeah, it also just didn't do as well as the mainline games, as yeah. I think. I mean, it's though. understandable because, yeah. like, I, I don't know, maybe people are like excited when something like "quote unquote" new comes out. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know. I'm I'm just hoping that the hype around genealogy is real. Because I've been seeing a lot of people interested in it in like the Fire Emblem community, whether that's through like heroes or just like by word of mouth. Like that game is just amazing. I really hope that they first of all, I really hope that they actually make that the remake. And second I of feel all, like that if they're gonna good. remake a game, they're probably gonna do genealogy, right? Or maybe they were like, Oh, we're gonna make three houses and skip genealogy. No. <laughs> that would be kinda sad. Well, I mean, I've heard rumors that it might be a, like, Radiant Dawn or Path of Radiance kind of remake, remaster thing. Why would you remake that? I don't know, but yeah, also they're because, still, they're like... They're still, like, pretty recent, right? They're really recent, yeah. So I've heard that, and then, of course, um, the other thing is Fire Emblem Six, um, Binding Blade, where Roy yeah, I feel is like from. they could do a lot to spice it up. Uh, spice like, what up? Like... Like, if they were, like, remaking Fire Emblem 6. Yeah, true. Have you played Fire Emblem 6? Uh, I think I played a little bit, and then I stopped. Ah, I gotcha. I got bored. Yeah, same, except I was trying to... Well, basically, I, I couldn't play the game after a certain point because of uh, reasons, but anyway. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it seems like a really fun game. It's one of, uh, one of my friend's favorites, so definitely something that I'm pretty excited to see if it were to be remade, but I would be pretty disappointed if it were remade first. 
Um, and of course, Fire Emblem 5 has to be remade after they make um, Fire Emblem 4, because 5 is like a part of that story. So not really a sequel, uh, a mid goal, but yeah. Anyway, that was a lot of talk about Fire Emblem, which we don't even know is going to show up tomorrow. Is there anything that we need to touch on when it comes to the direct? <laughs> Smash Bros. Oh my god, I forgot sma about Smash Bros. Okay. So, speaking of genealogy, um, are we thinking that uh, the main character of Fire Emblem uh, 4, Genealogy of the Holy War, Sigurd, is going to be the next Smash Bros. fighter? <laughs> Probably not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> another Fire Emblem character. Yes, another Smash Fire Emblem sword character. <laughs> Who would literally Fire play... Emblem characters that aren't sword characters? <laughs> Yeah, what what are you talking about? There's only swords. There's no uh, axes or lances. Just swords. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. They need to add all. They need to add Claude. They still have to add Claude Edelgard and uh, Angie. What are you talking about? Their weapons are there. That means they must be part of the game. Oh, you're right. Well, Fire Emblem side, I don't think they're gonna do that again. Unless they came up with the list before they saw what happened to Byleth. And, uh, I don't know. But, um, yeah, who's going to be the last fighter? It's not Dante, which I'm very disappointed about, so. To be honest, I think they're not going to announce a new character tomorrow. I feel like they might really? save the announcement for next month. Like, I think they'll just say, hey, we're going to have a Smash Bros. Direct covering the last fighter in a month and then Sakurai will announce that character along with maybe a detailed um, video like covering that character's moveset and stuff I don't know I feel that the timing is a little too early because although we're kind of in like a dry period for Nintendo games and Smash Bros um, I just feel like the release or the announcement of the last character of ultimate is best fit for like fall or winter um can you remind me when the dlc is going to be coming out like when is it slated for uh i mean there's no set date yet for the last fighter oh did, did they not even like have a month that they would release it on because i i thought there was like a timeline or, or something I mean, when they first announced Fighters Pass 2, I think they said the last one would be at the latest, I think, what was it, February 2022, I think? Or no, or maybe it was just the end of 2021. But... Okay. Hmm. I mean, yeah, in that case, it might be pretty early to see Smash, but... Uh, I don't know, we have a 40-minute direct... They've got to at least have something up their sleeves. I don't think Breath of the Wild is going to be... Is Breath of the Wild going to be here? If it is, it's not going to be like... It's not going to be a teaser for Breath of the Wild. It's probably going to be a longer thing. Although I, I also doubt that it, it's just going to show up at all. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like they're, they've got to have at least one big teaser... And they know for sure Smash is going to be a big one. So they have the teaser trailer, they show the character, and then they tell us when the Smash like direct is happening. That Or they could do what they did with Steve, I guess, and then say, like, hey, there's a direct happening, like like you said, actually. Um, and then we'll just have to wait for Sakurai to show us the character himself. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. I just like think it because in Smash Four, I'm pretty sure for the last character meta, um, they're like, uh, instead of like saying instead of like having the last character be revealed in the, in a Nintendo Direct, they just had a separate Smash Bros Direct that was announced prior. So, I just think like oh because it's the last one, they want to make it more special. Mm, right. If it's separate, yeah, you know, in a separate um stream or direct. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I mean, I, ideally, I'm like dying to figure out, dying to learn who's the last 
character. Yeah. <laughs> do I, we want to like act responsibly? Yeah. Do we want to like think about who the character could even be? <laughs> oh yeah, of course. <laughs> what I what mean, are we what are we feeling? I mean, you saw or you may have heard me like when we had that cap episode with Nintendo. Yeah. Like I, my predictions was like Crash Bandicoot in a Pokemon, and I. I, and although I was not able to predict Kazuya, like, I don't think anyone predicted Kazuya. I, I'm still believing it's either going to be Crash Bandicoot or Pokemon. Because, or Crash, because, like, he's iconic, and Pokemon, just because they can, like, be so unique with their moveset, depending on the Pokemon, obviously. And also, <laughs> it would just tie in with Brilliant Diamond and Pearl, as well as Arceus. True, but I think... I mean, assuming that this list was made after by list reveal, I I feel like they would know that a well Pokemon, yeah, Pokemon would be considered a first party character. Um I I don't know. <laughs> True, though. I mean, Pokemon Sword and Shield is like is the best selling Pokemon game and although you could say stuff about its quality, it has brought the money in. So That's true. I mean, I don't know. I'm not saying I want a Pokemon in. <laughs> I just feel like there would there's a good chance. Yeah, I mean, I'd I'd like Crash or even like maybe an Xbox rep like Master Chief or Doom Guy, somewhere somewhere along those lines. Those were that would be pretty pretty hype and kind of like something that everyone can agree with being like a big deal at least um not everyone's gonna be happy with them but everyone would recognize yeah that's kind of a big deal so yeah i don't know oh uh what are you thinking heaven oh i was gonna say as someone who's only experience with smash is just you know smashing but buttons for uh zelda <laughs> <laughs> um my prediction is Waluigi. <laughs> oh my god. Oh yeah. I, no, I just think it would be funny. Like it's <laughs> have a good chance. Yeah. Like, just the last Smash player. But... That would be amazing. I didn't. I completely forgot about him. I can't forget about Waluigi ever again. We gotta make sure that we are rooting for him uh, tomorrow at tomorrow's uh, Direct. <laughs> Waluigi for Smash has to happen. It's got to. I mean, that kind of would close out the, uh, that would create like a bookend to the Smash Ultimate Saga. Like we started with Smash Ultimate being revealed, and Waluigi not being there, and the people were like, those chairs in the background. <laughs> That's Waluigi's oh, yeah, colors. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, that means that he is the last Smash fighter to be revealed. I don't know. Nice. Andy, do you have any uh, expectations for Smash other than Waluigi? Um, no, I don't know anything about Smash. Gotcha. <laughs> I guess I've played it a few times, but uh, I don't have no any. I don't have any predictions. Yo, Andy, you were insane during that game night. Like, yeah, I lost. <laughs> yeah, I lost to Kirby. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Mitch, you didn't tell me you were uh like competitively. I would have never oh. challenged you. Oh. <laughs> I'm a sore, I'm a sore loser. I would never, cha I would have never oh. challenged you. That'd be. Oh, you can play against Nick. <laughs> You'll have an easy time winning. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> oh God. I hey, I I just don't understand the game. Okay. Also, my name is Anime. <laughs> <laughs> Who is anime's main in Smash? Uh, uh, anime A Annie's main, as in my main, would be, uh, yeah, Lucina. <laughs> <laughs> Very similar to uh, another person's uh, main, but yeah, let's go with Lucina. That or maybe Zelda. <laughs> <It's official. laughs> All right. Do we have anything else that we want to talk about when it comes to the, this direct, or are we just like hoping for Zelda and kind of expecting some sort of mention of the other games? 
Any like crazy pres predictions actually out of left field other than the Fire Emblem games that we talked about? Yeah. Zelda, <laughs> Zelda drops tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shadow drop Zelda Breath of the Wild too. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Hello, welcome. <laughs> Here's the game you wanted. At least that would free up like Monolith Soft so that they can make Xenoblade Three, right? <laughs> I mean, oh yeah, I, we, I totally forgot Xenoblade 3 is like rumored, so that could be their quote unquote big reveal for tomorrow. Yeah, I. Even if it's just a teaser. I still haven't played uh, 2, and I've played a bit of 1. Actually, I should finish 1. I really should. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's. I have the Wii version of 1, so it's a little bit tough for me to play right now. Which is an, a little unfortunate, but yeah. Dang. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I was gonna say, uh, I know I don't think you guys play Hades, but I'm kind of since it's like their one year anniversary, I'm kind of mm. hoping that uh, Nintendo does something because it became a pretty big game on uh, Switch, especially. Yeah, won a few awards, I think. True. Yeah, yeah and nominated for Game of the Year. So yeah. I'm hoping, yeah, so that's what I'm also hoping for, like, I, that's extremely unlikely, but mm. I'm kind of hoping for something tomorrow. Uh, okay, I guess my crazy prediction is that if they do announce the new Smash character, it's gonna be Monokuma from Dragon Rampa. <laughs> <laughs> I have no evidence, it's, it's it's just what I personally want. Uh, I, I think that there's a uh, Danganronpa game also announced for Switch, but it's not yeah. on this like list here. But I, I'm pretty sure that's a thing I happening. Think it's out already. Oh, it's it's already out. Okay, never mind. There, there's been so many games that like I could have sworn were still coming up and are already released. But regardless. <laughs> Alright, that those are our crazy predictions, and hopefully we get at least one of them right <laughs> tomorrow. And so, I think that pretty much covers everything that uh, we're expecting tomorrow, or hoping to see tomorrow's, at tomorrow's direct. Um, yeah, any closing thoughts, anyone? I don't know, I possibly. Yeah, please fire up Please fire him. <laughs> and also check out the other content on this channel. Like and subscribe. <laughs> and uh, what else? Like, uh, we have a Conchu issue that we'll be releasing sometime soon. Next week. Next week. The like and subscribe. Come on. Uh, uh, be louder. <laughs> Hit that bell button. <laughs> Smash that yeah, subscribe like button. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you all for coming to our predictions. And I guess I shall see you all later. Great day, everyone. <laughs>